Hello Liz, in this video we're going to be going through the concept of relative atomic mass and we're going to be showing you lots of worked examples. So if this sort of question comes up in the exam, then you are fully prepared to answer it and show off to the examiner, structure your answer in a way that the examiner knows that you know what you're talking about. If you want more practice questions around this topic, if you want to practice more and really, really get confident with it, then over on the website there's a free set of questions and a free set of flashcards to go with this video to really help you remember everything. start by taking a closer look at the mass of atoms. If we use lithium as an example, you may sometimes see on the periodic table elements laid out with these two numbers alongside them, so we're going to look in a bit more detail what these numbers mean and why we include them next to the symbol. If we start by looking at the smaller of the two numbers, this is referred to as the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons that an atom of that element would have within its nucleus. Because all atoms are neutral in charge, this is also the same as the number of electrons that atom has. The larger of the two numbers is referred to as the mass number. The mass number represents the number of protons and neutrons added together that would be found in the nucleus of an atom of that element. It makes sense that the mass number only includes protons and neutrons because electrons have such a tiny mass they don't contribute to the mass of the atom. Alongside these two numbers, we also write the chemical symbol for that element. So for in this instance, this is the chemical symbol for lithium. The periodic table has all of this information for every known element. It has the atomic number, mass number and the chemical symbol and these are used universally. From this information, we're able to determine the numbers of each subatomic particle, protons, neutrons, and electrons, that would be present in an atom of this element. And we're able to determine this for every element present on the periodic table. We're next going to look at isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have a different number of neutrons. So everything else stays the same, the chemical symbol, the number of electrons, and the number of protons, but the number of neutrons in the nucleus is different. In isotopes then, the number of protons and electrons stays the same. This is really important to remember as this means that the chemical properties of these isotopes are the same. The number of electrons on the outer shell is what changes the chemical properties and because these have the same number of electrons, this means that they have the same chemical properties. Here we have an example of three different isotopes for hydrogen. You can see they have the same chemical symbol, the same atomic number, but their mass number is changing. Underneath each of these I've written PEN, which is the number of subatomic particles in each of these atoms. We're going to go through them one by one and make sure that we understand what changes in isotopes. The first isotope, the notation is H-1. That tells us that it's an isotope with a mass number of 1. If we look at the first isotope, we can see that it has one proton and one electron. We know this because the atomic number is one, and therefore that means there's one proton. Electrons are always equal to the number of protons, which tells us that there's one of each. We can say that there are no neutrons in the nucleus of this isotope, and we can say that because the atomic number is one and the mass number is one. So the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons added together. If we know that there is one proton and the mass number is only one, then we must say that there are no neutrons. The second isotope has an atomic number of 1 and a mass number of 2, and the notation is H-2. Because the atomic number is 1, we know that there's one proton and therefore one electron. For this isotope, we would say that the number of neutrons is 1. This is because the mass number now is 2 for this isotope. We know that the number of protons hasn't changed, that's still 1, so in order for a mass number to be 2, there must be one proton and one neutron, as the mass number is protons plus neutrons. Looking at the third and final isotope, we can see that the atomic number is 1 and the mass number is 3, and the notation for this isotope is H-3. The atomic number is still 1, so there's one proton, and therefore one electron. There is now 3, so that suggests that there's two neutrons present in the nucleus. Again, mass number is protons plus neutrons. We know there's one proton. So to get a total of three, there must be two neutrons. Isotopes are very, very common on GCSE exams, so it's worth making sure that you understand how they work. 
It's very important that you know that the atomic numbers will always be the same, but the mass numbers will be different if isotopes are present. When you're looking at atoms of the same element, you won't always find isotopes. Looking at these atoms of the same element, if it's not an isotope, then the mass numbers of these atoms will be identical. There won't be any differences in the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So when looking at these three carbon atoms here, we can see they have the same atomic number and the same mass number. This means they are not isotopes, they are equal atoms of the same element. So when we come to identify atoms of an element that we think might be isotopes, our focus should be on the mass number. The symbol and the atomic number will be the same, but the mass number will be different. If we look at these three examples here, they have the same atomic number, the same symbol, but three different mass numbers. This tells us that they're isotopes, and this is because the number of neutrons present in the nucleus affects the mass number, as the mass number is protons plus neutrons. So this tells us that these three carbons are isotopes. The next thing we're going to look at then is how to calculate relative atomic mass and what relative atomic mass actually means. The first thing to think about is that atoms are actually tiny, and they're so small in fact we need a whole new way to measure them. We can't use our normal standard units like grams and kilograms because the numbers we'd be working with would be so small we'd have to use standard form and they'd be too small to work with in calculations. So instead we use our own unit which is called relative atomic mass units. So let's look at what relative atomic mass actually means. The relative atomic mass of an element is calculated using both the mass number from the periodic table and the relative abundance of each isotope of that element. But what is relative abundance? Relative abundance is the percentages of each isotope as a whole of all the atoms of that element. So if we take carbon as an example, carbon-12 makes up 80% of all the atoms of carbon and carbon-13 makes up 10%, and carbon-14 makes up 10%. So using this, we can work out the average mass of a carbon atom to put on the periodic table. So now we're going to look at how we actually calculate the relative atomic mass for an element. So the formula for relative atomic mass includes the percentage of the first isotope multiplied by the mass of that isotope, plus the percentage of the second isotope multiplied by the mass of the second isotope. Then divide all of this by 100. So in this table here, I've given you isotope A and isotope B, the masses of both and the percentage abundance of each of the isotopes. And we're going to calculate the relative atomic mass of this element. So we need to put these numbers into our equation. So we need to do 75 which is the percentage of A, times 35, which is its mass, plus 25, which is the percentage of B, times 37, which is its mass, and divide this by 100. So next, all I've done is the sums inside the brackets, 75 times 35 to give me 2,025, plus 25 times 37 to give me 925, divided this by 100. This has given me a relative atomic mass for this element of 35.5. So it's important to remember that the mass number that you see on the periodic table is the relative atomic mass. This means it takes into account all of the isotopes of an element and the percentage abundance of each of those isotopes, which then gives an average mass number for all of the atoms of that element. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.